Okay, so what we've seen is with cubic, with cubic polynomials, there will be three roots. There'll be three zeros. They may, two of them may be imaginary, but there'll always be three. So this sort of raises an interesting question. Suppose that I just tell you the zeros. Would that allow you to figure out which cubic polynomial I'm thinking about? So let's just think about that for a second visually. Suppose I say to you, hey, I'm thinking of a cubic polynomial, and it has a zero right here, right here, and right here. Do you know that cubic polynomial for certain? Well, the answer is no, because there are many cubic polynomials that actually have these as roots. Let me show you some visually. So I'm going to show you the graphs now of those things. See, one might go up, down, and that, like that. There's a cubic polynomial that has these as the roots. But let me show you another one. You can have even a steeper one. Look at that one. You see, that's a completely different one, and yet still has these as a root. You could also imagine one that has like a negative, sort of an unhappy one. Comes down like this, goes up, comes down. So in fact, there are a lot, in fact, infinitely many possible cubics if I just tell you the roots. However, if I tell you the roots and just one other point that the function actually satisfies, so maybe I say, OK, it has these three roots. And you know what? It also passes through this point right here. So I say, you know, at 10, I know the function is going to be, you know, 7. Then those four points, believe it or not, completely determine that cubic. And there's only one cubic, only one cubic that's going to pass through all those things. Maybe it would look like this. And there's only one answer. So just knowing the roots, just knowing the zeros, and one extra point, you can pinpoint that function explicitly for cubics, for cubics. So let me illustrate that with an example. So let's find the cubic polynomial, so a third degree polynomial, that has its zeros at uh, x equals minus 3 x equals 1, and x equals 4. So it has three zeros. One's at minus 3, 1, and 4. And I have to give you one more piece of information, and I'll tell you that if you plug in 2 into the cubic, the thing you get is going to be 30. Now I'm going to show you how you can find out for sure, pinpoint, the equation for that particular cubic. And the secret is to use the factor theorem again. So the factor theorem tells us that x equals minus 3 is going to be a 0 precisely if x minus minus 3 is a factor. So what that means is that I know that x minus minus 3 must be a factor of this. But then I can do the same thing here. If x equals 1 is a 0, that means that x minus 1 must be a factor. And if x equals 4 is a 0, then x minus 4 must be a factor. So in fact, that must be the factorization of f, except there may be some big coefficient in front, some number. I'll call it a. So look, I just almost know the polynomial completely. The only thing I have to do now is find a. Well, how could I find a? Well, one way to find a is just to use this fact. That particular fact is going to pinpoint a completely. Watch. If I let x be 2, so wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in 2. Not here. That's not an x. That's something else. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in 2. Then I know this has to equal 30. That will allow me to solve for a. Let's try it. f of 2. Well, on the one hand, it equals a times, now this is a 2, and then this is a minus, a minus is a plus. So we have 2 plus 3, which is 5 times, put a 2 in here, I see 2 minus 1, which is 1. Put a 2 in here, I see 2 minus 4, which is about 2. Oh, I'm sorry, negative 2. Ha! Caught myself on that one. Okay. Now, that we know we're told equals 30. 
So in fact, if I set that equal to what it equals, 30, I can now solve this for a. And what do I see? I see that, well, this is just negative 10. So I see that negative 10a equals 30. If I divide both sides through by negative 10, I see that a must be negative 3. So there is a coefficient. The coefficient is negative 3. So this polynomial is equal to negative 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. And that is exactly the polynomial. Now, if you want to know what that is in unfactored form, if you want to see it unfactored, you can just you know, multiply everything through. First of all, multiply that out. That term right there, for example, would give you an x squared plus 2x minus 3. Do you see it? x squared, minus, and then we have a 3x minus x is plus 2x minus 3. So that's that piece. Then you've got to take that whole thing and multiply it through by x minus 4. So you have to distribute that x through each of the three terms. You have to distribute the minus 4 to each of those three terms. And if you do that, I'll just tell you the answer. The answer is going to be something like, something like minus 3 times x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. And now I'm going to leave it to you right now as a little challenge to just check that by multiplying these three things out yourself and verifying that you get that. Multiply the whole thing through by negative 3, and there's your answer. Okay, neat. Let's try one last one. Suppose I tell you I'm thinking of a cubic polynomial, and the roots, or the zeros, sometimes these are also called, you know, these are zeros, sometimes they also call it roots, are at x equals minus 1, 2, and 4. I need to know one piece, more piece of information, and I'll tell you that if you plug in 1, you get 3. Now the question is, what is the equation for that cubic? Okay, let's use the factor theorem. There may be some coefficient out in front, but if minus 1 is a 0, that means that x minus minus 1 must be a factor. If 2 is a 0, that means x minus 2 is a factor. If 4 is a 0, that means x minus 4 is a factor. So all this is known, everything is known except for that number in front that may be, may be there. And so what is this? Well, that's there. And I know this fact. So f of 1, if I let x equal 1, this whole thing has to equal 3. So let's see what we get. Now that's not an x, so I just keep that there. That's a. Here I have a 1 minus minus 1. That's 1 plus 1, which is around 2. Then I see a 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Then I see a 1 minus 4, which is a negative 3. And that whole thing is to combine to give me 3. That's what we're told. f of 1 equals 3. This is f of 1. So I can solve for a because this tells me that I have 6a equals 3, and so that implies that a equals 1 half. So if a equals 1 half, I just put a 1 half in there, and I see what the polynomial is. It equals 1 half times x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 4. So there's the answer. And that's the way I like to think of it. In fact, that is, I think, the best way to look at the, the polynomial. But OK, maybe some people you know, want you to actually work that out all the way. If they actually want you to, to work that out and actually figure out what that is just in terms of the cubic, multiply that out, let me just do that for you now. Last one I let you do, I'll do this one just to show you that I'm fair about these things. We have the 1 half way out in front. First, I'm going to multiply this out. That's going to give me an x squared. Then inside I have an x, outside I have a minus 2x, so that's a net gain of negative x, and then I have a minus 2. And that's all multiplied by x minus 4. So now I've got to multiply everything through by x minus 4. So remember how that goes. You have to distribute really carefully. This has to hit everybody. Boom, boom, boom. And then that minus 4 has to hit everybody. Boom, boom, boom. So if you're just careful with it, there'll be no problem. x times this. I have a 1 half out in front. OK, x times x squared is x cubed. x times minus x is minus x squared. x times minus 2 is minus 2x. 
I just took the x and just multiplied it through by everything. Now I'm going to take the negative, negative 4, and hit it with everything. So what do I get? I get negative 4x squared. I see now a plus, negative and negative is a plus, 4x. And then here I see a plus 8. So what does that equal? Well, I can combine this a little bit. I have 1 half. I've got an x cubed. And I have some x squareds here. I have an x squared, minus x squared, and then a minus 4x squared. That gives me a net total of minus 5 of them, minus 5x squared. And then I have a minus 2x, but then I have a plus 4x, so that's just a plus 2x. And then I just have a plus 8 at the very end. So this is another way to say the answer. Or, I won't write this, but you can distribute now through by the 1 half, and you'd see the following f of x equals 1 half x cubed minus 5 halves x squared plus x plus 4. Do you see how I distributed the, the 1 half through? That is the, cube, the one cubic polynomial, the one cubic polynomial that has the feature, the roots are minus 1, 2, and 4, and it passes through 1, 3. Enjoy.